Feels like there was a spark from that shoe. What's up guys, Vinny here with Sneaker Tweaker and welcome back to another video. Today we have our first impressions review on a very highly anticipated shoe, the Nike Sabrina 1. Now this shoe, once it was leaked, everyone was extremely hyped about it for good reason. Just from my initial wear, I really don't have many or if any bad things to say about it at all. That could very well change with more and more wear, but just from initially wearing it, I haven't really seen too many faults, if any, currently. This shoe along with Puma's Stu two I guess I would say the two well-known signature shoes for WNBA stars I mean I've played a little bit in the Stewie twos already I haven't gotten the chance to put too much time into it yet but for me these already just out of the box feel better a lot of that has to do with just the tech Nike puts in there the traction in these I mean the traction in those is pretty solid as well but I think these for me at least for my experience were a tad bit better I mean there was I guess not too much room to complain now as many of you also know sabrina was pretty much a student of kobe bryant rest his soul and so therefore not only did she probably most likely play in his signature shoes all throughout her career leading up until her signature shoe but you can see where she gets design inspiration from and just the performance uh, or the tech inspiration as far as what's in this shoe again this is a low cut shoe it's minimalistic and it's for guards quick on your feet as always though let's started off with the traction the sabrina one features a multi-directional traction pattern which just goes throughout the whole shoe it has some herringbone that just kind of swerves and then you have this middle strip that goes down middle of the shoe and that one is also multi-directional and from my initial wear it honestly gripped like crazy i didn't really have any issues with it and then on top of that it had a very nice loud squeak Now, I don't know if this is going to be a good shoe to play with outdoors just because, I mean, the rubber in itself seems pretty thick and pretty durable and the grooves are pretty thick as well, but just I haven't put in enough time on the court to tell you, hey, this is how the wear and tear is on this shoe. If it's going to last, you, if it's gonna start wearing down on an indoor court, then it's probably not a good idea to take it outdoors. But as far as how it grips, it grips really well and dust, really i mean i was testing these out on pretty dirty floor and it was gripping through it so i didn't really have any issues with it nor was dust collection issue with and any dust that was on there just a quick easy wipe and again those are just more so initial impressions now for the cushion the sabrina ones feature a react midsole and then a zoom unit in the forefoot the zoom unit in the sabrina ones is similar to that of the jaw ones but the midsole as far as react i would say is better than what's in the jaw ones cushion if you're quick guard and you, you really don't require too much cushion just enough to not wear your knees down and just play the way you want side to side i think these got you covered i mean for me even at my age i think just playing in this minimalistic cushion setup i'm probably good to go i was good to go in the jaw ones so I don't see how this sh would be any different. Cushion, I'm gonna say, is probably going to be adequate. As for sizing, these are true to size from my experience. And if you go on Nike's website and you go into the men's section, the Sabrina ones, even though they are women's shoe, they're also listed in the men's section. So it'll automatically set it to whatever size you are in women's. And that way you don't necessarily have to go through and figure it out. But basic rule of thumb, it's about a size and a half difference from men to women. So for me, a size nine would be in a women's size 10 and a half. Now, Puma is a little bit different. Puma, I believe after size 10, they don't do halves. So it goes to size 11 instead of 10 and a half. So for my Stewie twos, I had to get a size 11, but it still fit perfectly fine. These ones though, size 10 and a half, if you wear a size nine. And again, basic rule of thumb, a size and a half difference from men to women. As for the materials and the support, these just feature a lot of, I would say, looks like Nike's like recycled materials. And then you do have like a lot of mesh all through 
throughout the upper and it's pretty lightweight mesh and particularly on the medial side and then the lateral side it's pretty thin and there's a lot of room for breathability on top of that the tongue is pretty perforated so if you're looking for a shoe that's not going to let your feet overheat these are great on top of that you do have this tpu piece going through the lateral side of the forefoot to help with support as far as keeping your foot in the footbed on hard stops and you also have a pretty nice big outrigger right here on the outsole so as far as stability and just keeping your feet flat on the ground these are money now for a size 9 men's or i guess a size 10 and a half women's these do weigh in about 12.7 ounces which is pretty damn light honestly if weight matters to you then these are one of the lighter shoes you're going to get in the size 9 and they're pretty minimalistic so if you love kobe's if you love the jaw ones pretty much all of nike's line and people say oh you you say that because you love kobe's and stuff like that no nike knows that people love kobe's so they're making a lot of their shoes like kobe's because not only do the consumers love it but all the nba players that they have signed on love it devin booker shoes looks like a mixture of a bunch of different kobe's together not saying that these shoes aren't good or anything like that which i believe these are good it's just you can tell where the inspiration's from again 12.7 ounces for a size 9 and then these do retail for $130 so a lot of these signature shoes debut ones are retailing in higher than what they used to they're used to debuting at like $100 $110 now they're coming in at $130 so it is a little bit steeper but they do have a, I, I would say a decent amount of tech in here not crazy but a decent amount now the sabrina ones also come in this box right here it is her logo with nike and then it's a pretty simple box you really don't have too much going on with it it's a lot like the box for i guess the jaw ones nothing crazy you have her logo her signature right here and then you do have a message from sabrina in the lid nothing too crazy but for the shoe honestly i feel like this is going to be a year where it's going to be super hard for me to pick top basketball shoes of the year because there seems to be a lot of great performers. So stay tuned for that list because that's going to be a pain in the ass to make. If you guys have already played in the Sabrina once, let us know your experience down below. If there are any other shoes you guys would like us to review, again, comment down below. For more content like this, please like, subscribe, and follow. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!